Complex Circuits. This presentation has a total of three practice problems, two of which I will guide you through and the last of which you will need to practice and bring to class tomorrow. So complex circuits. The main idea is you find segments of the circuit that are only series or only in parallel, and then you find an equivalent resistance for that segment. You replace it with a single resistor that has that equivalent resistance, and you redraw the circuit and you simplify it until you get a simple circuit, and then you can find your V's, your I's, and your R's all from those simplified circuits. So let's start with this first one. So we have a complex circuit, and you can see that here, it looks like the 5 ohm and the 20 ohm are in parallel, and they are with each other, but then also we have our R1 over here, and it's in series with these other two. Okay, If that doesn't make sense, hopefully by the end of this presentation, things will start to make more sense. For this, what I find to be helpful is to draw terminals and to look between those terminals and see what that type of circuit I have, if it's just series or just parallel. So for this, I will draw a terminal here and a terminal here. And what I want to say is, to the right of these two terminals, I'm going to look at the circuit. So to the right of these two terminals, I can see that I have the 5 ohm and the 20 ohm in parallel. And right now, we are completely ignoring the R1. So I'm just looking at these two terminals, and I want to find, what, again, what we call the equivalent resistance. So what I will do is treat this to the right as a circuit in itself, simplify to find the total resistance, and then redraw the circuit. And so if I treat R2 and R3 as only in parallel, which they are for this, these two terminals, then I can say to find the total resistance for these two, or the equivalent resistance, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over RT. And this is going to be the RT for just these two parts. And so here, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20 will give me 0.25 is equal to 1 over RT. So my equivalent resistance, and really let me just use an E here, is going to be equal to 4 ohms. And what this means is I can redraw these two as a single resistor with a value of 4 ohms. And so that's what I want to show you here. And so I'm going to do a quick drawing, and I add my R1, and then this is going to be my equivalent resistance and go from there. So this will be 6 ohms, and this is going to be 4 ohms. And let me go ahead and actually let me use a different color. This set of terminals are equal to this set of terminals. And so if we were to measure just the resistance to the right for this segment, we would measure 4 ohms for this we would measure 4 ohms for this. And now we have a simplified circuit, and we can see pretty quickly that this is a series circuit. And so now we can go from there. And again, our total voltage is going to be 30 volts there. And so now we can start filling in our table as we go along. So let's go and fill in what we are given. So we have 6 ohms there. We have 5 ohms. We have 20 ohms. And now to find the total resistance, this is our simplified circuit here. So we have 6 plus 4, since it's in series. So we just add those together, and our total resistance for the entire circuit is going to be 10 ohms. Now we have our VT as 30 volts. And now we need to figure out how to do the rest of these um, blanks. The first thing that we can notice is we can always still use ohms law going across. So 30 volts, 10 ohms, that's going to give us 3 amps. V equals IR. From here, now we need to figure out where we can use our rules for each segment. So right now, if we look at our simplified circuit, in our simplified circuit, we have 30 volts and a total of 10 ohms of resistance. And we said we have, if we were to put an ammeter here, we are measuring 3 amps. Now we did nothing to our R1, and so because we have our, our circuit here, we know we have three amps going through this, so we know that we have three amps going through our first resistor here. 
which means we also know now, using Ohm's law, V equals IR, so 3 times 6, that's going to give us 18 volts. And so that means, if I were to draw the terminals over here, we know that we have 18 volts over here. Now the next part is where you have to really understand series and parallel circuits. So we said for a series circuit, which is our simplified circuit over here, we have 18 volts dropped across our R1. We only have another resistor here in our simplified circuit. And so we know for a series circuit that our voltages add up. So our total voltage is 30. One of the resistors is 18, which means that if we were to measure the voltage here, what we would measure is 12 volts because 18 plus 12 must equal 30. Now, where I've drawn my voltmeter here is equivalent to drawing my voltmeter here. So if I were to draw my voltmeter here, it would be the same. So I would have 12 volts, which means that this voltage here, because this is parallel over here now, these must have the same voltage. So these R2 and R3 will both have 12 volts. Again, the reason for that is our simplified circuit, the 4 ohm resistor represents the 5 and the 20 in parallel. We found that our simplified circuit, the 4 ohm resistor, has a 12 volt drop across it. Now we bring in our rules for parallel, and we say for parallel we know that the voltage is the same, so the voltage across here is 12 volts, so we know it's going to be the same for both of these. Now we can use Ohm's law to fill in the rest of the current. So V equals IR, so 12 is equal to I times 5, which gives us 2.4 amps, and then 12 and 20 ohms, or 12 volts, 20 ohms, should give you 0.6 amps. What you will notice is we cannot use our rules for series and parallel going all the way down our columns now. But for specific segments, we can. So for example, we said our second and third resistors are in parallel, so the rules for that should remain the same for parallel circuits. If you look at 2.4 and 0.6, you'll notice that that, that that adds up to 3 amps, which is the total current through that circuit. So this is one way to work out the problem. Here's another problem. This is similar, but opposite in a manner of speaking. In this case, what you'll notice is that there are two resistors in series, and that is in parallel with another resistor. So to go a little bit deeper, the way to visually see this is you're looking for two or more resistors that are only in series or only in parallel, and then you replace it with an equivalent resistor, you redraw the circuit, and you keep doing that until you have a simple circuit, either series or parallel. So in this case, I'm going to draw my terminals here and here. And again, looking just to the right of these two terminals, I notice that I have an 8 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor in series with each other. And using the rules for series, I know that they're going to add up. And so if I were to measure the resistance just to the right, I would measure it as 20 ohms. And so I can replace both of these resistors with a single resistor of 20 ohms. So I'm going to redraw the circuit. This one is still 5 ohms. This one is 20 ohms. And these are the terminals here. So this is my simplified circuit. And let's go and start filling in our data down here. So we know our R1 is 5 ohms, R2, 8 ohms, R3, 12 ohms. We know our R1 voltage is 10 volts, so we're going to put that over here. And this is everything that's given to us initially. Now, we can look at our simplified circuit. We see we have a 5 ohm resistor and a 20 ohm resistor in parallel with each other now in our simplified circuit. And so we can use our rules for parallel now. 1 over 5, 
plus 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over RT. And like the previous problem, this will give us an RT of 4 ohms. So we know our total resistance here is 4 ohms. Now the next part of this is understanding voltage here. If we look at where the, we are measuring this voltage, it's across this 5 ohm resistor. So we've measured the voltage from here to here as 10 volts. And if we have our simplified circuit like this, hopefully you can see that now, since this is just a parallel circuit, if we have 10 volts across our 5 ohm resistor, that means that is our total voltage here. So our VT is 10 volts. And now that we have that, we can start calculating our current. So 10 volts, 5 ohms, that means we have 2 amps going through our 5 ohm resistor. And our total current, if it's 10 volts and 4 ohms, V equals IR, that should be 2.5 amps. And so, if we were to start to draw this out, our VT is 10 volts, IT is 2.5 amps, and our RT is 4 ohms. If I were to draw an ammeter here, we would have 2.5 amps going through there. If I were to draw an ammeter here, we would have 2 amps going through this branch. And in our simplified circuit, it's parallel. We know that the current adds up to the total. This would be our total down here. This is through the first branch, which means that if I were to put an ammeter here, this should be 0.5 amps going through this branch. So this is our simplified circuit, just parallel. The, the current adds up to the total. Total is 2.5. The first branch has 2 amps, so the second branch must have 0.5. So in our simplified branch over here, our 20 ohm equivalent resistor, we have 0.5 amps going through that. This 20 ohm resistor represents both of these in series. And we know that for series circuits, the current is the same. And so from this terminal to this terminal, we know we have 0.5 amps going through these. So here we have 0.5 amps, 0.5 amps. And once we do that, we can use V equals IR to find the voltage. And so that means our V2 is going to be 4 volts, and our V3 is going to be 6 volts. And if you think back to the rules for series, the voltage adds up to the total. And if you look here, 4 plus 6 will give you 10. So remember, this segment is what we are simplifying, and that's the part that's going to be in series. This takes some time, and you need to have a firm understanding of series and parallel circuits to be able to combine it to be able to do our complex circuits. This next slide is for practice. This one should be in your packet, so you can work in your packet. Once you finish with this, I would also recommend for you to keep mo moving on and practicing. This becomes a lot easier with practice.